My name is Craig Blomberg. I am a distinguished professor of New Testament at Denver Seminary and am completing my 30th year there. And I have just written The Historical Reliability of the New Testament to be published by B&H Academic. I wrote this specific book after focusing exclusively on the Gospels in uh, previous works and then just dabbling in the rest of the Bible in one recent book uh, because uh, quite frankly colleagues and friends and publishers were saying we need something that covers the rest of the New Testament in the same kind of detail as what you've done in the Gospels. So this is a book that uh, should be accessible to any uh, layperson with uh, some kind of a modest educational background, certainly any college graduate, any upper division, uh, junior or senior at a good undergraduate program, uh, but I suspect seminary level is where it will have the most use and I've tried to include enough footnotes, enough references to other scholars that uh, even those in the guild who uh, want an up-to-date overview of the best of uh, believing scholarship on this topic can uh, learn something fresh. Outside of the Gospels per se, uh, certainly one of the issues that uh, involves other parts of the New Testament that keeps coming back in the culture, keeps coming back in the academic guild, uh, it's not always phrased this, this uh, baldly, but wasn't Paul the real founder of Christianity? Wasn't he the one that gave shape to what we know as the Christian church? Didn't he rather radically distort the simple message of a Jewish rabbi named Jesus? Um, and then closely related to that, uh, what about the portraits of Paul's life that we find on the one hand in the book of Acts, on the other hand from his letters? Can those be harmonized or don't they come out somewhat different? In the case of his letters, uh, another issue that won't go away, Bart Ehrman's Forged, the uh, title of a recent book of his brings it up again, is can we believe that uh, Paul wrote the 13 letters attributed to him? Can we believe that James and, and Peter and uh, Jude and John wrote the letters attributed to them? Uh, so there are a number of issues that keep circulating. Textual criticism, the study of the variant readings uh, in the thousands of manuscripts that we have of the ancient New Testament uh, does seem esoteric, uh, not terribly relevant to many folks until they start paying attention to the footnotes even in modern English translations and discover that there are places uh, where makes a difference for the meaning of, of a passage, uh, which reading you follow. It doesn't happen that often. The vast majority of all textual variants are very, very minor issues. But uh, once again, our culture, the blog world, uh, the critics of uh, Christianity, a growing and sophisticated Muslim apologetics builds its case from the fact that the New Testament was not preserved as accurately as the Quran has been. Uh, how do Christians respond to that? Um, if we are going to share our faith in the marketplace and make a, a, a credible case, we have to be able to uh, address the basic questions surrounding textual criticism. I certainly wrote the book to serve the church as well as uh, the academy. Um, it can help individual Christians if they are having doubts uh, about issues of the trustworthiness, the reliability, the canonizing, the transmission of uh, any or all of the New Testament. It can help those who are secure in their own faith but want to know how to answer questions they get from others that they talk to about their faith. Uh, it can help those who 
are secure in their faith today and can't imagine um, this ever being an issue. But something in life happens. People aren't as secure as they once were. Uh, so hopefully it will be a resource that uh, can be of use for people who need it immediately or at some time in the future. People who are church leaders and teachers and pastors need to periodically be talking about these things because they're issues the culture raises. And increasingly the, the non-Christian world is not apathetic. It is uh, to varying degrees hostile um, for all kinds of reasons. And one of the claims that we keep hearing again and again is why do you rely on this collection of ancient books that has been shown, so they say, time and time again, to just be riddled with errors, myths, legends. Christians better have a credible response. Christians are being refined. They're, they're being called to have their metal tested, and we need to be able to give account for the hope that's within us.